welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to try to make our very own larvae doll. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this or not, but it cracks me up. Somebody on a, I think it was like a Kickstarter, started doing this larvae doll, but I'm going to try to make one. And we're going to start with some armature wire. And the armature wire is to wrap some aluminum foil around and to give the body some shape because we're going to be using our polymer clay skills today and this is a really long video that I've cut down from about four hours to about one so it's a long one bear with me but I think it'll be fun for you and you'll use some techniques maybe you you could use in some of your own projects so anyway this will be the basis of the doll I'm trying to shape it approximately in the shape of of the one that uh, this person made uh, I don't think you can buy these anywhere except through the Kickstarter campaign because I was trying to find one. I wanted one. I think they're hilarious. But um, anyway, uh, I said, well, I'll just try to make one myself and make a video about it and that'll be fun. So this will be the basis and we're going to wrap some aluminum foil around it because you don't want to try to have polymer clay that thick or it'll be really hard to for it to bake. So... What I like to do is build a, a base with aluminum foil and then just put a layer of the polymer clay on top of it that's not too thick and that will bake a whole lot easier and more successfully. I've tried this when I was making silicone babies. You cannot, you just cannot bake something too thick. It just doesn't work. So uh, we're going to speed through a lot of this stuff that's not uh, showing you details because this is such a long video. So uh, just keep up and hang in there we'll get there but basically all I'm doing right now is building up the body and uh, the obviously the body part is going to be thicker than than the uh, rest but she does have arms and they're jointed so I'm gonna try some techniques here I'm using just a metal bead that has a pretty wide hole in it uh, and I'm gonna attach it to the place where I think approximately where the arms will come out because I want to try to do sort of a ball jointed effect with the arms. I haven't exactly figured that out yet, but uh, I'm just going to glue this bead to the wire at the point that I think uh, it it's going to you know be where the shoulders would be. So then we can just build the aluminum foil and the clay around that, and we'll leave a hole open to have what I think will be elastic. To go through so that we could attach two arms that can still move that'll be a project so yeah we'll be using a lot of different techniques in this project that hopefully uh, you'll find interesting but anyway i'm just going to let that glue dry and uh, after it dried i realized it needed a little bit more substance so i actually used a, a glue gun and put a little bit thicker glue around it so it would stay in place and not fall off e6000 has its purpose but it wasn't quite enough in this situation. <laughs> so we've got the glued bead there with the hole in it. And we'll try to keep that open for the place where we'll put our arms. And now I'm just going to continue to build onto the body with the aluminum foil. And there, if you know, you know, with aluminum foil, it can be really good in, in sense of how, how it molds around things. But also the ends can come loose. So I do use a glue gun occasionally just to glue the ends down. And that just helps me to make sure that I have a nice firm base. Uh, when you start putting clay on this, you don't want it to be shifting around. And you don't want the aluminum foil to come loose. So, uh, you know, you can you know do this however you want. It's just what I was trying to do to keep the aluminum foil in place and not have those sort of loose ends dangling around. And uh, when you start putting clay on, that would make it slip. So just keep using strips of aluminum foil and building up the areas that you want to be thicker and I squish it pretty hard you know you want it to be firm you don't want it to uh, be so that when you start putting the clay on that it'll squish down because then your, your clay is going to get out of shape but it's come along pretty pretty well now and uh, I can tell you that uh, this this was quite an interesting project, but I was so determined to have a larvae doll and I couldn't get one through the Kickstarter campaign because I came into it too late. I saw somebody had actually gotten one on Facebook and I was 
so I was just so intrigued with it uh, to have a doll that's sort of a you know this is a, a pun on on Barbie of course but larvae being larva the play on the word larva or the worm and uh, I think he calls it a teenage mutant larva or something. I can't remember but it's hilarious you can probably if you Google larvae you'll find it. And if you can find one, you know, that's great. Buy it. Uh, but if you can't, you could always try making your own out of clay. And basically this video is going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to make uh, the aluminum foil go pretty much everywhere except the very, very end of the tail. And I'm going to make the head separately and attach it. So I want that wire to stick up from the neck because I'll use that to sit the head down on and also I know I'm gonna have to make that foot separately and glue it on because I'm gonna have to mold it to a shoe because of course I want to be able to use you know Barbie shoes with my larvae doll of course so it's gonna have to actually fit the Barbie shoes so we're coming along now it's getting a pretty good shape but yeah I did buy a whole pack of <laughs> Barbie shoes well some kind of shoes that would fit Barbie. I don't think they were branded Barbie. But the foot is the thing that cracks me up the most. I am going to use Fimo, and I'm using the soft because if you try to use regular Fimo, you will break your fingers. It's pretty tough, but I do like it. I think it bakes well, uh, and it and it uh, molds well. So uh, the soft is even not, you know, all that soft. But when you're molding something like this. You know, the, the issue that you run into is that when you get it to the point that you can mold it and it's warm and, you know, malleable, then it also, if you're, you know, messing with different parts of something that you're working on, you can mess it up by uh, just, you know, accidentally touching it or, or having it hit something. And, uh, you know, that's one of the problems when you're making something all in one piece like this, that you've got to kind of watch all the different areas. But it works pretty well, and it, it'll harden up pretty well, too. Now, I'm just making uh, strips of the clay and wrapping it around my base of aluminum foil. And as I go, I'll just be smoothing it with my fingers or tools that I have. And then once I get it, get it to the size that I want it to be, then I'll start molding in some of those creases and things. I've, I guess like segments of a worm, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be pretty funny, I think. Uh, I use this uh, rolling pin, and it is actually for polymer clay, although you could use any kind of thing like this that you wanted, but I think they sell them at Michael's. I do have a pasta machine that I can use to soften up clay, but it's just too much trouble to get it out and mess with for this project. So. Uh, to soften the clay, I'm using this rolling pin in my hands as much as I can. And um, just the warmth of your hands tends to help too. And, you know, you can just then smooth it with your fingers or if you have, you know, some soft tools. I like to roll it sometimes on the table, as you saw there, to help get it round. And just use whatever you have, whatever you like to use. I did order three packs of this uh, Fimo clay, and I just got it from Amazon. Uh, if you can find it somewhere else, you know, that's fine, but they happen to have it in this flesh color, which was perfect, and I've used Fimo before for lots of other projects, and I like it. It seems to be pretty consistent. I guess you could make this out of air dry clay, too, um, but given that, you know, you want it to be this pink color this you know works well because then you don't have to paint it or anything so uh, I think it'll work out pretty well if we can get all the parts to to get together I'm gonna have to make use of some different techniques because you know obviously this one that that was made for the Kickstarter was a mold that was then you know uh, uh, made out of plastic part a harder plastic so this is my multi-tool that I use so much I've had it for probably 20 years <laughs> and uh, use it on, on clay all the time. It's just the most useful tool. It has that uh, rounded flat back that's great for for sort of smoothing and uh, contouring and then it has that other pointed end that's great for making ridges or 
you know, making designs or just poking things that you needed to poke. So it's probably my favorite clay tool ever. I do have lots of other ones, but that's the one I use the most. I've also used silicone tip ones, and I'll use one in this as well. So I'm going to take a wire that, the same sort of wire that I'm going to be using in the body, the armature wire, which bends really easily. I just want to stick it in there. I'm not going to attach it or anything, but uh, as we start building the clay around that area where the bead is and the armholes, I want to just keep that area open, and that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Now, it's going to move around a lot, and it's going to fall out a lot, but um, that's okay. You know, just stick it back in there and keep molding around it. And as I've been doing all along, I just keep making strips of clay and uh, wrapping them where they need to be. This was kind of fun to get back into polymer clay. I haven't worked with it in a while, but it is one of my favorite mediums. I've used it for so many different things. I've made dolls with it and jewelry and <laughs> and little sea creatures. And you name it, I've used it for just about everything. But uh, it is really useful and you can do so many different things with it. So um, if you haven't ever worked with it before, certainly something that can serve a lot of purposes and you can use it for a lot of different ways. I even, you know, like... When I make dolls, if I need like an accessory to go with a doll, like Cleopatra's headdress or whatever, you can make it out of clay and add it to your doll. So polymer clay is something that tends to show up in my projects quite a lot. So I'm uh, starting to work around that arm area now and just trying to keep that area open where the, the hole will be for the arms. And also, you have to make sure that you're building up the back as well as the front because uh, it's going to be proportionate so that it's going to look like, you know, where her shoulders would be. So you kind of want to put equal amounts front and back. I mean, I guess that's how worms are. I didn't know that worms had arms, but <laughs> I guess this one does. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just, you know, you're, you're doing a fantasy project. It's got arms. It's a worm with arms. And uh, it's a larvae. <laughs> I hope I don't get smacked for for using that name. But anyway, I, I just think it's hilarious. And I do urge you, if you can find a real larvae, to buy it. So hopefully that person will be satisfied with that <laughs> as far as my contribution to his effort. But uh, it'd be nice to have a real one. I think it'll be a collector's item someday. <laughs> Teenage Fashion Maggot. That's what he calls it. Teenage Fashion Maggot. That's hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, the the uh, head is it really does look like a shape, you know, with the paint like a a, a Barbie. And I'm gonna make one out of clay, so that'll be that'll be a separate video, though. I don't have time to do it in this one. This one's turned out so long. <laughs> took forever. Took days and days working on this thing. So um, we're getting to pretty good shape, where it's starting to look like the actual figurine and I'm just going to keep building up until I get it to the thickness that it needs to be and then we'll start adding some of those ridges or segments or whatever they are. <laughs> I wonder if she has boobs under that top. I really, I, There's no way to know I guess without actually having one. Maybe if you have a larvae let me know. Are there like real boobs under the top? I'm going to just do a a worm boob ridge <laughs> instead of actual boobs. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I don't think it's appropriate for the worm to have boobs because they don't produce milk for their children. <laughs> right? <laughs> so she's going to just have ridges. She'll have some maybe a little bit more protruding ridge than the rest of the body. You'll see. <laughs> but uh, just keep checking. Like if you can find a picture of, of like I did for the larvae and then just keep checking to make sure you've got the shape right and the contour right and the position of the body. One thing I noticed is I kept getting it so that the arms were at an angle. So I had to keep straightening that 
hole up because I didn't want the arms to be more, you know, forward or backward on one side than the other. So just a couple things to watch for is just to keep looking for the symmetry. You know, look at it from the top and the sides as you're working on it to make sure that you keep it symmetrical and you keep the arms in the right position and the leg because that was the other thing was the leg kind of got bent at one point. So um, just want to make sure that you keep that. Now if you get to the point that it's just getting too soft from you handling it, you can always, you know, wait a day or so or just wait a few hours and let it harden back up a little bit and it and then put more clay on top of it. Um, but here I'm going to start putting the the boo bridge. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a little extra clay here. I think it will add to her outfit. And that's why. Because I really do want to make some outfits for this thing. <laughs> I think that can be hilarious. But yeah, I'm just doing it on the front. Just adding a little extra uh, roll of clay, a roll of worm fat, <laughs> and then just uh, smoothing out the edges. That'll make it, that'll make her outfits fit better, right? So she's got to have that. <laughs> I'll have to come up with another name for her than Larvy, though, so I'm not infringing on his copyright. I'm sure he has a copyright. No way. I mean, I guess somebody could pick this up, like a doll company, but and again, I'm not sure that everybody will get the joke. <laughs> they should, but it's, you know, you know how people are. So anyway, uh, starting to make some ridges now that I've got our shape pretty much finished. And I started out using the end of a paintbrush uh, just to make them sort of wide and then just running it along the top of the clay. If you wait and do this after your clay's hard and it's harder to do, so... I was trying to do it after I had worked on this for a while and the clay was still a bit soft. And I did end up using my other tool to deepen those ridges eventually. And we're going to speed this up. Uh, you've seen the technique. Once I show you the technique, uh, we're going to speed things up since there's just so much film here to get through. And I don't want to make this last for three hours. But uh, yeah, just make your ridges with the end of a paintbrush, a thin paintbrush, and then you can go back with your tool and make them, those ridges a little deeper. And uh, I use the rounded part to to soften those edges of the roll so they look more like rolls and not like just, you know, a crease in the skin. Because it's very worm-like to have, have them look like rolls. <laughs> yeah. And if you have to, also another tip is you can put water on the tool. That helps it slide over the clay. And uh, especially when you're using like the silicone tipped tools, uh, add some water to the tip. Even you can do that with your fingers, you know, to help smooth it. That's another thing I learned when making silicone babies. Uh, one thing you'll notice that as it goes across the back, the ridges are closer together and then they spread out as they go down to the stomach, which is, you know, that's realistic for worms, right? And, um, <laughs> or humans that have a lot of fat. Yeah, so, uh, now the bottom of, of the doll is flat, and I did that to, you know, so she'd have a, a base to stand. So, you, you know, you don't want to continue the ridges around the bottom. Just, just across the top. So as you go across and, uh, get to the tail then you can start spreading them out again to where they're just evenly placed but just across that part that's bent you would put the creases across the top closer together and then have them spread out as they go around the body and the creases kind of continue up most of the tail not the whole way um, once it gets to the end I'll just leave it plain and uh, we'll be working on attaching that foot later, the foot that we're going to make. So uh, now I'm going to be using that silicone tool. So I'm just spraying some water in one of these medicine cups. Just makes it easier to, to get it wet. And I always keep a spray bottle of water around because if I just keep a cup of water, it evaporates. <laughs> but if I keep the spray bottle, it's always ready for me. And spraying, you know, sometimes you need to spray things as opposed to dipping it. 
So uh, this tool is really nice just to create a really soft rounded edge crease. So um, it worked nicely in these little segment areas. And using the water, it helps it to slide over it and not, you know, cause the clay to, to bunch up. So that's a good technique for you to use with your polymer clay. And all I'm doing now is shaping. I'm just um, deepening the ridges and softening the edges and making it look so it's not just like a cut in the in the clay. That it's it's an actual fold or crease in the skin of the of the worm <laughs> larva. <laughs> uh. This is uh, this was a really interesting project because you you're because you're working on so many different parts at one time. Like you can see where where my hand is. I'm trying to hold like the wire to hold it steady because if you start say holding on to the body, you you just end up inadvertently pressing your fingers into the clay and then a a place that you've already shaped and gotten in the you know in the shape that you want you'll press it in so that's just something you have to think about when you're working on something where you're working at different places at different times is to watch where you put your fingers because you could mess it up and then you have to go back and fix it so the the wire sticking out of the neck actually ended up being a place that I held on to a lot and also the end of the tail because I was I knew I would end up shaping the tail more later and, and that was okay because I was going to have to make it so that it would fit with a foot that I'm going to make. So I'm going to have to make a foot and then attach it to the tail. There's just no way that you could shape the foot and the body at the same time and then bake it all at one time. So this way you get it, you know, you can bake the body and you can bake the foot separately. So we're going to take a little break now and work on the foot, which is my favorite part of our body, that shoe. So to make it fit, I took one of the shoes and cut the top off so we could use it as a mold because the bottom is, is the part that you really need to have molded. So I got a, a piece of clay and I sort of rounded it out into you know a tube shape and then I'm just pressing it down into that mold. Now we're going to have to do some work on this later, obviously. It's not going to magically mold into the, the shape of a Barbie foot, but... Uh, the, the bottom is crucial and also getting that angle right where the toe bends is crucial. Otherwise, these shoes that I bought are not going to fit. And we must have our wardrobe of shoes. That's all i got to say about that. So uh, just get this in the basic shape uh, of the foot, you know, with the heel. You want to have that rounded heel and have it as narrow as the, the uh, width of the shoe. And then when we bake it, we'll be able to come back and do some sanding and carving and get it into the shape that we need to fit all the shoes. But basically just, um, you know, molding it with your fingers, smoothing it, get it get it as close to the shoe, shape of the foot as you can, then, then the less you will have to do later. But uh, you can, if you need to, you can let that sit for a minute and get a little hard before you pull it out, but... Um, I went ahead and pulled it out and it worked okay. So while we're baking the foot, we're going to uh, continue working on the body. I'm going to put that wire back in there. Just want to keep that hole open as we continue to work and make sure that it's the uh, passageway is clear. Now I cut off some of that excess wire. I want to have a little bit of it sticking out because we'll have to drill a hole in the foot. Um, and I noticed that her neck is a lot closer to the shoulder than what I have. I have too much uh, real estate up above where the hole is. So what we're going to do now is carve off some of this clay so that when we get the head, all we're going to have to do is just stick it down on the body. We'll already have basically a neck per, you know, ready, and then uh, we'll, we'll leave the wire there stick it up and make the head, drill a hole in the head and stick stick the head on. But 
Right now, there's just too much chest above where the armholes are. It doesn't look natural or doesn't look like it does in the picture. I don't want to say natural because it's not natural. It's the worm doll is not natural. But anyway, I'm angling up uh, from the, the boo bridge up to the neck. <laughs> uh, so that, that it's a little bit smaller area up around where the wire is for the neck area. And then uh, I'm going to cut that top part eventually so that it's more of a flat surface to sit the head down on. Right now I just want to get it more like up, up to a point where the neck would be. And then I can just use the, you know, a knife or exacto. And now I'm going to cut it flat so that we have that nice base that we'll be able to set the head down on. I'm also going to try to cut off some of this aluminum foil so it's not so hard to get off later, hopefully. But I um, want to make sure you got that straight too because that's going to be a mess if you have if you have a bent wire trying to go up into a head that has a, a straight hole drilled into it. <laughs> This wire, the armature wire, you can buy that on Amazon also. You know, I get everything on Amazon. I have stock in Amazon, so I'm going to just keep buying from them. But um, the armature wire, it's nice and thick, but it is very malleable. It is very soft. So uh, now I'm just going to try to make sure that I have those holes really nice and open to make for the ball and socket joint. And that tool, that silicone tool is perfect for that. Just dip it in the water and stick it in the hole and it really opens it up nicely. And I like that it also opens it up at an angle so the outside is a little wider than the inside. So the inside is pretty much the same width as the hole in that bead. Now we want to do the same thing to the tail that we did to the neck. We want to have a flat surface. I'm going to end up having to trim this more later once it's baked. but. The less you have to trim after, the better. We will do some sanding to the body. And here's our, our foot that baked and came out and fits nicely. Now, you'll notice there's a ridge once I can get this focused. These cameras focus weird. You see that ridge? That's just where it went down into the shoe. But that's also the size that the foot needs to be. So what we have to do is start carving off the side of the foot to be flush with that ridge because that's really the actual size of the doll foot. Barbie's feet are so tiny. So what we're going to do now is speed this up, but it's a process of carving with the X-Acto knife to get those sides the same width as that bottom ridge part that was in the shoe. And then we're also going to be doing some sanding to smooth all that area out because no matter how much you're careful when you try to carve you know you create you know irregularities or ridges in the skin also there are certain places where you can you really it's hard to do much carving in the curve of that foot where the toe is you know with a straight blade so using a round sanding tool will make it easier because I can tell you this toe is too thick. It's not going to go in any of her shoes. So we're going to have to sand that toe down to where it's a little bit thinner. Now, uh, the only Barbie that I own is a sandstone Barbie. And if you don't know what that is, that's Barbie's... Uh, I guess it's the, the company's uh, answer to high-end dolls. Collectible more dolls than play dolls for children and they're you know quite expensive but they're really beautiful dolls and they're um, they're very heavy and and the plastics you, or it's a resin is a it's called sandstone and that's why they're called sandstone Barbies but anyway I do have one as a collectible doll and we're gonna pull her out in a minute once I get this foot to where I think it's mostly in shape and then we'll here it is that's the sandstone Barbie foot, if we can get it to focus. These cameras only focus on one thing at a time, and you have to 
foursome. <laughs> there it is. But you can see those toes are so thin. All right, so this is what we've got to get to for those shoes to fit her. And you can see my toes are still too thick. But the shape is good. You know, the, the arch of the foot, I think the heel uh, shape is pretty good. So we just got to do a lot more carving and sanding to get that down, especially this area right here. Yeah. So I have a tool that I use that uh, is great for clay. Well, it's great for a lot of things, but it's really just for, it's what it is is a fingernail. It's for fingernails. So uh, if you go on uh, Amazon or even if you can buy them on uh, Ally Express, different places, but anyway, just buy you a little, uh, they're, and they're exp inexpensive. I don't think it's even $20 maybe. But you can use different sanding heads and they're perfect for dolls because obviously if you're sanding your nails, you don't need a Dremel, which is gonna be too powerful and just eat right through your nail. And also these are oscillating, they're not circular, they're not going around in a circle, so you could actually touch that and it's not gonna hurt you. Um, but it does a pretty good job of sanding. So like I'll use this when I'm making my Blythe dolls as well to do some of the, the areas where I need to, to sand a little bit uh, deeper and don't wanna do it by hand. And uh, it works nicely to to do it sort of gently, you know, like it's it's going to only just take off so much. It just can't, it can't sand down like you can with a Dremel. I have a Dremel, but I only use that for projects where I have to really, you know, where it's, it's going to be a, a much more exaggerated uh, use for that. This has to be subtle and, and gradual. So looking good, looking like a Barbie foot. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> amazing what you can do. Now to finish up, I always use this uh, 3M product. This is their, uh, they have different, this is super fine. And they come in these sheets, foam sheets, and you can cut them. I like the foam sheets because, uh, you know, when you're working on curves and creases, it's nice to have something that you can bend and f fold and make it fit into different areas. So this will make it really, really smooth. It's a super fine sandpaper. So now I'm going to try it in an actual shoe that has a, a, a top on it. And yay, we're successful. We have a fitted shoe. Oh, I'm so excited. Yay. So now we can make her shoes match her outfits when we make them. All right, now we're going to attach it. So uh, basically this is just a process of looking at the Looking at the width of the ankle of the, on the leg part and also looking at the width of the ankle on the foot part and making them match as, as best you can. And there's several ways to do that. You're going to, you know, have the option to carve or sand either, either side, either the leg or the foot. And then also, uh, you'll see in a minute, what I found is that the end of the leg part was just too small and I had to cut off a little bit of it to get up to the wider part that would match where the um, where, where that would match the width of the ankle so uh, right now I'm just carving down and sanding the the ankle of the foot to get it in a shape that will fit with the leg part of the ankle and here I'm just gonna carve off a little bit of the bottom of this so that it's a little up closer to the wider part that will match the ankle of the foot so several techniques here that you can use to make sure that these match now obviously you are gonna have a little um, you're gonna have a little space that you can see, a little line. It's not gonna be very noticeable. If you do this well, if you get it to where it matches pretty well, you're not gonna be able to notice it too much. And I almost wish after I had finished it, say looking back is, you know, 2020, but looking back, I probably would have attached it so that I didn't have quite so much length of the ankle on the foot because, you know, one of the things you can do to camouflage the line is like, Put an ankle bracelet on it, like a little chain, and I may still do that. 
uh, although the line that I've created is a little bit further up than an ankle bracelet would normally sit on a, on a foot, but hey, I mean, it's a worm. It can do it any, any way it wants. So that's just one thing to think about is maybe uh, I should have cut off more of the foot ankle and had the attached leg come in right at the top of the foot instead of where it, where it ends up coming out. But I think you'll see at the end, it doesn't, it's really not that noticeable. And if you had to, you could always go back and put clay into any crease that was open and rebake it. It's a nice thing about polymer clay. You can actually bake it again as long as you don't, you know, bake it too much. All right, we're going to put the, drill the hole in, and I'm using this little um, tiny drill set that I got. It has like super, super tiny, and I got this, you know, for the doll work that I do. I tend to have to use drills that are really tiny. But this is a little hand drill. Um, I know you're going to ask me where I got it, and I'm pretty sure I got it on Amazon, but... Uh, you might could get these at Lowe's or Home Depot too. I'm not sure. So sometimes I feel like I'm like I should be working for Amazon. Like they should pay me. But anyway, uh, so once you get everything shaped where you want, and you can put your drill bit in, and uh, making sure that your drill bit is the same width as the wire, and then you just twist it, and it goes into the plastic. Now, once I got in to a certain depth here, it actually started to crack the clay. So um, that caused an issue because I really wanted to drill it a little bit further. But once it started cracking the side, I had to stop. And it wasn't going to be enough. So I had to take a couple of actions here to fix that situation this is how my this is how my site rolls folks if you haven't ever watched it I always make mistakes but I make mistakes so you don't have to and I show you how to fix them so anyway uh, how we're gonna fix this is one way we can dig it out more with the exacto knife that's one way the other way uh, which I'll show you is we're gonna use uh, our handy tool which has this little pointed uh, file. It's like a, it's round, but it's pointed and it's like sandpaper on the side. If, if it will ever focus so that you can see it. Oh God, this camera drives me crazy. Anyway, uh, we're just going to use that to go in and that'll make the hole a little bit wider and also a little bit deeper. And again, it does it very gently so that you don't have to worry about the fact that you might drill right through the foot, which if you were doing this with a Dremel, chances are good I would drill right through the foot. So <laughs> I'm using a piece of that same wire just to see how it fits and make sure that it goes in easily. We don't want this to have to, you know, to have to push it in. We want it to go in easily because we're going to glue it. Yeah, we're going to glue it. Yeah, so that works really well. That, that actually cleared it out quite a bit. Um, if you need to do more, you can. You can run it up against the sides to make the hole wider and more open, or you can just push it down to make the hole a little bit deeper. Very handy tool for doll work. You can get all kinds of attachments, you know, and they're, but they're all, I mean, they're all for nails, but you just can use them on dolls. And you learn to use which ones work well with the dolls. I had to shorten the uh, wire a little bit on the, the leg too, just because I wasn't able to get it quite as deep as I wanted to. And uh, also ended up having to cut off just a tiny fraction more. The other part was, uh, you know, how you angle the foot. You might need to angle the, the flatness of that cut. So all these things you think about. But what you want, though, is to get as seamless an attachment as possible and get it to where it's as close as possible and then you're going to put your E6000 in there on that wire. Don't put too much because it will squish out and you don't want to get it all over the clay. Just put it on the wire, stick your foot in, and any that squishes out, you just want to wipe it off.
Now once this dries, we'll be able to sand it a little bit, make it look a little bit more flush, but my biggest problem is that I, I glue things and then I keep messing with it and then I mess it up. So just put the glue on and set it aside and step aside, step away from the glue, but looks pretty good. But you can see there's some lumpy places on the, uh, on the clay and that's okay because we're going to go back and do a lot of sanding. So we've sanded the area, um, gotten it pretty well shaped. Now we're ready to put the arms on. Now I had this brilliant idea that I was going to use the arms from this Ibitsu 11 body. And I was going to drill a hole in the little ball at the shoulders and attach a uh, screwed uh, wire with a round head that I could attach a, a elastic to. Because these are right, like the right size arms, right? So I tried, I tried it. I was going to attach these little screw things in and it just split the ball. It, I would try drilling it, just split the ball. So that was a fail. Don't try that. All right, here's the next possible way to do it is we're just going to make them out of clay with wire. So I'm using this copper wire. I think that's about... 816 gauge if I'm correct you can get that at Michaels might be able to get it at Amazon but I got it at Michaels my other guilty pleasure and so we're gonna cut two wires that will have enough room for a loop on one end and then I'm going to show you another way that I've decided to cheat <laughs> I'm gonna use the hands off of that a bit suit all but because there's no way I'm going to make those little tiny fingers. So anyway, you just take your um, pliers with rounded, rounded nose pliers and make a loop. And you want to make the loop small enough that it fits inside of that arm hole. Because that's going to be the joint. Okay, we're going to run elastic through there to, to join the two arms together. So you learn that from making ball jointed dolls. We can use all of our knowledge. So anyway, uh, you're just going to make two two wires uh, with the loops that fit, and then once you make get that right, you want to make them the right length. Um, they're going to end up being curved, uh, so you know you could you can stick the clay on them when they're straight or curved. It doesn't matter. It's probably easier to stick it on once it's curved, but. I'll, I'll show you that I made a mistake here. I So I had to do two arms. I'll tell you that right up front. So anyway, these arms, uh, just making the, the loop now, and I'm, I'm doing this fairly slow because it's kind of a new thing so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I got this elastic. This is elastic that I used, that I've used with dolls. And it's nice and heavy, and I thought it would work well. Um, it fits through the hole. I thought it would be, you know, good and sturdy to hold the arms in place. So that was my plan, and then we would attach the the two wires on either side. So th that's that's the way the plan is at this point. <laughs> Soon to go awry, I will tell you, but that's that's coming later. All right. So the arms look like, uh, you know, they're kind of a little bit curved, and they have some little segment marks in them. And I am going to make use of these hands, though, from the Obitsu doll, since I've already ruined her and I can't use her for another doll. Um, but the hands pop right off of the joint, and they have a hole. So I think I can just make a little nodule at the end of the arm and just glue the hand on. <laughs> I think that's going to work. Tricky, huh? Yeah, well, you make use of all, you know, all your options when you're doing these things. But those little tiny hands, I mean... God love you if you can make them. I can't. Maybe you have some elves working for you that can make them. I can't. So, anyway, I'm going to shorten these wires up a little bit after looking at it. It looks like it's just a little bit too long. So, we're going to shorten those and also make them the same length so that she doesn't look like a hunchback. And then we're going to take the tube of clay that we roll out 
and run it through, run the wire through it. I hope this works. <laughs> you know I already know that it works, but I like to keep you in suspense because I've already finished the doll. But anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going to cut it about the length of the wire. You can cut a little extra just to make sure you have enough. And then just jab the wire in there. And you want to run it on up over and make a shoulder and then pinch off the end. So that part, and you can put it in there and sort of mold it up against the shoulder so you know that when you bake it, it's going to fit right up against it. That's another tip that I will give you. Because if you don't, you might have a big gap and then it's going to not look like a, a natural shoulder. So you make the shoulder go up a little bit over the wire and then flat against the body. And then I bent it sort of rolling it in my fingers to smooth it out. And then we're just going to um, take our... I'm going to put a little water in there because I might need that on my tool. But um, we're going to use my favorite tool to make ridges because apparently worms have ridges on their arms. <laughs> uh, but I'm making the little elbow crease, inside elbow crease now. And that tool, that silicone tool, works well for that. And now we're going to start making creases. And the hardest thing here is making them meet up. <laughs> I don't know why that's so hard. But um, you can use your tool also to help shape that shoulder area and make sure that you have it so that it fits up against the whole of the body properly. But yeah, just run the tool around it and hopefully your line meets. Mine never did, but you can always fix that. <laughs> so we'll, I'll show you how to do this arm, and then when we get to the other arm, we'll speed it up a little bit. But I wanted to show you this since it's something new. But basically, we're just going to make some little segment marks, just like we did with the body, and smooth it out with the tool so it looks like it's rolls of of uh, worm fat <laughs> in the arm. I don't know, or segments. Worm segments. But it's nice because it goes with the body. And that, you know, in the end, I'm kind of glad that Abitsu arms didn't work. I was being a little bit lazy about that, but I was telling myself, oh, it'll be so neat to use those Abitsu arms because they're ball jointed and you could bend them and, and uh, you know, pose her better. But, uh, you know, honestly, I think it would have looked, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have gone with the body as well, since we're making these out of the same clay. So sometimes you have a failure and it's a good failure. That's the way I'm going to look at it. So now I'm just trying that hand on it just to see how that looks. And it actually looks pretty good. So I think that's going to work out. It doesn't look that noticeable, but we're the... Where the hand fits on it, you know, that crease looks like just like another fat worm segment. So, I'm, I'm all for using those little hands. I don't think that's too much of a cop-out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we got to speed through this other arm because you've already seen how to make one arm. And then once we get these ready, we're going to bake them. And I'll tell you about another thing to watch out for after we bake them. Because I made another mistake. No, oh, all the mistakes. If I could just get a dollar for every mistake I've made, I would be so rich. And that would be good because I don't make any money from these YouTube videos. I don't have enough subscribers <laughs> or views or whatever it is. So anyway, uh, get your. make sure you get them the same, pretty much same size and same length. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. All right, and just go bake these. and I bake them in my little toaster oven. And then uh, after we bake them, we'll come back and I'll, I'll tell you about my mistake. But I tell you so you won't do the same thing. All right, so here's the mistake. I baked them at too high a temperature and they became tan. <laughs> so look at the difference. Like, I can't, I wanted to use, I kept saying, well, I could just say she had tanned arms. But no, I made a whole nother pair. Yay me. I finally took the time to do it right. Alright, so uh, we've got 
arms that match the body and we're going to now try to attach them. Uh, so I decided, you know, to use this thick elastic because it's sturdy and I thought it would last longer and stand up to move in the arms. Now I did have to end up cutting out some area around that wire at the shoulder just so that the thick elastic would go through it because it was a little too thick. Um, so also if you notice there, I'm sorry it's a little off camera, sometimes my my work gets shifted and I can't see the camera so it takes me a while to look back over and see I'm out of out of the screen. But anyway, um, I use the uh, lighter to light the end because it's, it's you know plastic material and it just melts. I was trying to get it thinner uh, and it worked. You know, I was able to get it through and I made a knot in it and then I put some E6000 on the knot because I had a feeling that that knot would come loose eventually in there and the E6000 would keep it from coming loose. So uh, now we just threaded the elastic through the body and now we're cutting out that hole on the other arm to make sure we have a big enough hole to put the elastic through on that side. And here's where the problem came in. The knot, I tried squishing it with the pliers, but the knot was just too big to go into the hole. Now I could have made the hole wider, but I think that would have created a problem in the way the arm looked as it attached to it. So I was like, well, I can't use this. I don't know what I'm going to do. And uh, just going to have to come up with another option. So anyway, uh, cut this off. And just by chance, I had some thinner elastic thread. Elastic, whatever that is, elastic, thin elastic thread. I just happened to have some. Thank goodness, because I did not want to have to run out. So yeah, here's the thinner thread. And I just ran the two ends. I didn't tie a knot this time. I just ran ran it through this, the other arm and then ran both ends back through the body and then we'll tie a knot on this side and that'll, that'll work fine because then we'll just have one knot and um, it'll be easier to do it that way. Now what you want to do is you want to pull this really tight so that the uh, knot will go inside the hole after you finish it. So you just pull it really tight and then you're going to tie a knot. Make sure you're tying it really tight. I did. I think I did three, at least three knots. Now I'm still going to put some E6000 on it to keep it from unraveling. But I think now with four knots, um, that it's going to, you know, hold pretty well. And then, and and we do this because we're going to have to cut the elastic off. You know, we're not going to have a long piece of elastic in there. So. Just take some on the end of the tool and spread it around the knot so that it gets into the creases of the knot. And then that'll dry and hold, hopefully hold that in place and we won't have a problem with our arms falling off at some point when the elastic. And then just pull the elastic and trim it close to the hole. And that way it should all pop right inside Yay, and we have arms that move. Isn't that exciting? Yay. I think it turned out really well. And I'm glad that I rebaked her arms so they match her body. I didn't want to have to say that she was riding around in the car with her arms out the window and got sunburned. All right, so we're going to use the hands from the Obitsu. And they actually have uh, different si different hands with that doll. I'm going to use one... Uh, on one side I'm going to use one that has like a grip in case I want to put something in her hand at some point, like her holding something. And the other side is going to be a more spread out fingers. But uh, just trying them on now to see you know, how they fit, and they fit pretty well. So uh, now it's just a matter of putting some E6000 glue on. Honestly, E6000 should pay me. Don't you think? Like I mention them in almost every video. They have no idea who I am, trust me. Anyway, put a little bit of the glue on the end. And then we're just going to put the hands on. 
this will be the hand that has sort of the spread out fingers. Remember to put it with the thumbs up because that's how our hands are. Don't put the thumbs down or you'll have to take them off and redo them because it will look bad. All right, and then this other hand is a grippy, more of a grippy hand, like a something she could put, we could hold, she could hold something in. I don't know what, Starbucks coffee or something, I don't know. Why do I keep mentioning brands? I should get paid for that. <laughs> All right, guys, that was it. Yay, we did our larvae. Okay, I'm going to give you some photos now. This is kind of a top view. You can see how she looks really pleased with how she turned out but I am looking forward to doing the head that's gonna be interesting and my foot you can see you really you really can't tell where the seam is too much but I probably will put a little ankle bracelet on her anyway I don't know and the arms the ball jointed arms or wire jointed sort of arms they turned out well I'm happy with that overall happy really happy with it I think it looks pretty cute and, and it'll pass as far as I'm concerned for my uses you know and uh, that's really it for this video. Look forward to the next one. We'll be working on her head and attaching the head. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to make her an outfit then and, and put a shoe on her. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. And if you like this, please subscribe.